Okay, so here's the deal. Life obviously has ups and downs. This is not news to anyone. There are going to be times when we feel uncomfortable with the situation, whether it's something to do with a relationship or with our job or with our emotions. There are going to be times when we feel good, uh, we feel at peace, we feel relaxed, and we want to feel more of that. It's natural to say to ourselves, whatever I have to do to experience more of this, I want to do. So these ups and downs are obviously normal. So what I wanted to do is make a comparison between the ups and downs when it comes to mind identification and the ups and downs when it comes to awakening and realization. So if we make a direct comparison between being in the state of mind identification, which means identification with thoughts and concepts, beliefs, time, and the feeling of a solid separate self that's definitely you, and it's definitely apart from other things out there, other people, other events and times and objects and so forth. If we make a comparison of that with how it feels post-awakening, which does evolve and does change, but just in general, it's something like this. The ups and downs of mind identification are subject to the conditions of mind identification. They're defined by it. It's a very narrow bandwidth of experience, actually. And this is why we often feel this numbness or this life of quiet desperation where we're not fully experiencing the bandwidth that we know is possible. Now, we may have moments where we do experience a more intense, a more free, a more expansive experience, but largely it's pretty narrow. And the ups and downs, the enjoyable and less enjoyable parts are really not that far away from one another. Now, in comparison, post-awakening, the bandwidth expands considerably. And this can even be unsettling at times in that we're not used to experiencing sadness and fear and even anger in such direct ways. The emotions, we know they've always been there, but they've been sort of at bay or they've been modulated by the spell of mind identification. So now we're in contact with that full spectrum emotional experience. And we're also in contact with a vast expansiveness an intimacy that was not possible. You could say these are kind of like the highs. Although in this space, it's less of a high low, it's less binary. It's more like free and expansive and simple and sort of free of any solid physical experience of a center or a self. It's more like a fluctuation between expansiveness and peace and freedom that goes beyond the human dimension with very intense emotions that often feel contracted, feel heavy, feel dense. It feels like the center that has always felt like us at the center comes and goes. And when it's gone, it feels often very good, very enjoyable, let's say. And when it's there, it feels almost worse than it did before in a certain sense because it feels so foreign now. So there's still this sort of up and down experience, but it's much more like a sort of expansion and contraction. And the bandwidth is much more broad. Now, I also want to point out that post-awakening, the timing or what causes the expansion and contraction or what causes the apparent ups and downs of experience is quite different than mind identification. So the conditions here are much more subtle often. And we often can't even relate what it was that caused a contraction or caused uh, a dense emotional block or a resistance pattern to come forth. And we also learn that we don't really have to. It's not necessary. There's a deeper intelligence that's operating here, and it's very obvious. So it becomes less clear even what the conditions are that are causing these fluctuations. And it's not so important. However, there's still ups and downs. There's still times when you feel good, and there's times when you feel not as good. There are experiences which you would probably choose to experience more frequently if given the choice, and there are experiences you'd probably rather not experience if given the choice. And post-awakening, the conditions that create these fluctuations are different. The timing is different. You're starting to learn to live from the tick 
of a different clock from the beat of a different drummer. And it's not one that has to do with thoughts, beliefs, narratives, what it means to be a human being, what your past is, what your future might be. All of those seeming conditions that defined your experience previously just don't matter now. There's a much more fundamental, profound, ineffable something going on that's driving this. And you sense it more and more. Not only do you sense it, you start to orient to it. You start to trust it. You start to resonate with it. And the more you move from that, the more deeply peaceful things get, even when they're uncomfortable, even when we're going through an experience we may choose not to repeat if given the choice. So again, this becomes paradoxical, but the timing after awakening, and especially as realization deepens, is a very different kind of timing. It's a timing based on a sort of profound and paradoxically intelligent indeterminacy. So obviously there's no good way to describe this, but you sense it, you feel it, and you trust it, and you sort of give yourself to it. Over time, more and more of what you take yourself to be is just sort of dissolved into this. And this turns out to be none other than the sounds and the sensations and the movement. The sense gates are your direct access to reality. And this attunement to this Prajna wisdom or transcendent wisdom that aligns with a clock of indeterminacy becomes the most prominent thing in your experience. You see it right in front of your face. You feel it in your hands and your feet. You taste it with every bite of food. So life takes on a completely different timing. You could say there are still ups and downs in one sense. There can still be experiences that are enjoyable and experiences that are less enjoyable, but nothing hinges upon that. There's no one to whom that refers. There's nothing there to solidify that into a problem. It's a momentary noticing and gone. And everything is a momentary noticing and gone. And at the same time, the appearances are radically intimate, no distance, full contact. All there is is contact and it's empty of any abiding nature. 